So what would be the perfect meal to help you detoxify your liver? That's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing I want to mention is that going through a detox is not the same as a cleanse. There's all these cleanses out there that say like a 14-day cleanse, clean out your liver, right? Well, don't waste your money. Going on a cleanse with cayenne pepper and lemon juice with maple syrup for, a, for even a week or two is not going to help you clean your liver. All these expensive little kits with these powdered herbs and things that you can take to cleanse your liver are not going to, in any significant way, clean your liver. And I'm going to explain why. You have some powerful, amazing thing that happens in that cell. They go through like this assembly line of enzymatic changes, okay? You got phase one and phase two. And then phase three is just the full elimination of that toxin. And when I talk about toxins, I'm talking about drugs, medication, preservatives, xenobiotics, which are all the chemicals that are external to the body and foreign to the body. Like you have plastics, you have petroleum products, you have also mold and fungus and pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides. You have metabolic waste like hydrogen peroxide. You have toxins from smoking. I think there's over you know, six or 7,000 different chemicals, okay, with uh, about, I think, 74 to 100 uh, carcinogens. Then you have chemicals in vaping. You have caffeine, heavy metals. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Cleaning chemicals, alcohol, hormones that need to be broken down. So we are basically swimming, bathing in chemicals 24-7, especially if you use tap water and it's like in your shower head and you have to drink that and... I mean, it's just, it's hitting us from every different angle. Thank goodness we have this system of phase one, phase two detoxification. And the whole goal of this process is to turn poisons into harmless, water soluble particles. So, in other words, a lot of these chemicals are fat soluble. So, let me explain fat soluble. So, you can see right here, we have fat and we have water, right? Do you know they don't mix? This is the fat-soluble toxins right here. It goes into the body, but it doesn't come out. It gets stuck in there. So we need to turn this fat into something that's more water-soluble so it can go through the body. So what these enzymes do is basically add something to the fat and then and so they break it down into something that can actually go through the body, okay? This is another example that I use with like bile salts and what bile salts can do for fat, but it's a good analogy also for what these enzymes do to the fat-soluble poisons. Um, in phase one, they're adding, you know, either water, hydrogen, or oxygen to start to oxidize and break it down. The challenge with this phase one, okay, is that when this chemical is activated, it becomes more toxic, more dangerous, more of a carcinogen because you're adding oxygen and you're oxidating it and you're opening it up. That's why we have phase two. But we need phase one to be able to dismantle this so that we can then add the next thing to this chain of events. So phase one kind of starts the process. It activates things. It requires certain um, nutrients like folate, vitamin C, uh, certain B vitamins, calcium, etc. And this is also the phase where if you consume grapefruit juice, right, or grapefruit, and you're also taking a medication, there's a certain chemical in grapefruit that will retain that drug longer in your system, and it will make things more toxic for you. So you never want to consume grapefruit juice or grapefruits while you're taking a certain medication. And during phase one, there's a lot of uh, free radicals and oxidation happening. And this is where you need a lot of antioxidants. So antioxidants uh, protect the cell against all this free radical stuff going on. And detoxification is different because you're taking a poison and turning it into a water-soluble harmless particle. Now, after phase one gets a hold of that poison, then phase two comes in there. And it does something called conjugation, okay? And that's basically adding a water-soluble molecule to this compound. 
like for example, glutathione. So glutathione binds with it and now it's water soluble. And if you ever get a DNA test, you'll see uh, all these detoxification enzymes and you can actually see if you have a problem with them genetically. Like, like say there's a, just a mutation with one of those enzymes. And what that means is there's some sluggishness and that enzyme doesn't work like it should. So it makes you more susceptible to damage from that poison if you're exposed to it. It's just going to be harder for your body to get rid of that toxin unless you eat very healthy and you do things to really avoid that toxin. So the value of a DNA test will tell you the importance of avoiding a certain toxin or going above and beyond what you normally do to eat certain things to help this process happen faster. And when I'm actually evaluating DNA testing, I'm finding a lot of people have a problem with these detoxification enzymes. So in phase one, okay, the name of this group of family of enzymes are called the cytochrome P450 enzymes, okay? And then in phase two, you have a bunch of other names involving glutathione, but I'm not going to get into these names at this point. Just realize that all these enzymes pretty much do the same thing, but in different locations in the body and with different toxins. So like I said before, there are detoxification enzymes in your intestines, in your lungs, in your kidney, but the liver is the primary area of detoxification. So with phase two, you're attaching certain water-soluble compounds to help it become more water-soluble. And that involves sulfur, choline, certain amino acids, zinc. Now there's a couple of points I'm going to talk about with this whole assembly line of uh, enzymes to break down these chemicals. Uh, it really depends on how chronically you're exposed to these chemicals. For example, if you have a bad habit of smoking, okay, every day for a long period of time, that is going to be way more of a problem with these enzymes and the accumulation in chronic irritation and the side effects of things like cancer. Because remember, cancer is this chronic irritation or damage to the mitochondria that then switches over into this out-of-control cancer cell. Well, something causes it, and it's usually the chronic exposure to something, and it can also be diet as well. And on top of that, if someone has a fatty liver, which the majority of the population does, this phase one, phase two detoxification enzyme pathway just does not work like it should. Also, if they have inflammation in the liver, same thing, like hepatitis, it just won't work that well. And especially if they have cirrhosis, it won't work that well. Now, there's also a phase three detoxification where you're eliminating these water-soluble chemicals throughout the body. But what if, for example, you are constipated, right? Your bowels hold on to these toxins. Well, that's a problem because they accumulate, especially if you have chronic constipation. And another thing you can have is like dysbiosis, which is an alteration in the gut microbiome. There's a gut-liver relationship that if there's something going on in the gut, it's going to affect the liver because the friendly bacteria also assist in removing these chemicals. So if you had a lot of antibiotics or you have an overgrowth of yeast or a lot of problems with the gut microbiome, you can have a problem with detoxification. Now, a little bit higher up in the digestion, you have these bile ducts. Bile is one of the primary ways of eliminating these toxins, okay, as well as through the urinary system. But if there's anything going on in the bile ducts where there's a blockage, that's called coleostasis, where there's just like sludge or an obstruction from a, a gallstone, that can start accumulating these toxins in the liver and interrupt this flow that should normally happen. And the way that you would know that you would have that is usually like right shoulder pain or a fullness underneath the right rib cage or burping or belching. And the remedy is to thin the bile with more bile. And I like to use a remedy called Tutka, which has been known to greatly assist in the detoxification process of the liver and in other parts of the body. What about if the urine is obstructed? Okay, I mean, let's say the person has a, an enlarged prostate and they just don't eliminate like they should and they retain urine. Well, we have this accumulation of toxic material that just cannot exit the body and it backs up all the waste. Not to mention someone that having diabetes and having a kidney problem, which also causes them to retain these chemicals. But the question is, what can you do about it? What can you do? Well, the diet. 
out of all the things you can do, and I'm talking about supplements and, and remedies and all this stuff, the diet can help you the most when you detoxify. And I'm not talking about a two-week cleanse. I'm talking about something you do on a routine basis, a consistent basis, where you're eating these foods over and over and over again. So I'm going to describe a meal that I think would be the best meal to help your liver and other organs detoxify. We want to start with the egg. Okay, eggs are one of the perfect foods because they're high in sulfur, uh, complete amino acid profile. They pretty much have every nutrient, including choline, which is really good for the liver, as well as a fatty liver. And then you would cook those eggs with onions and garlic, two things that are very high in sulfur, not to mention all the antioxidants in onion and garlic that um, can help counter the phase one detoxification. And don't forget the sea salt to get some of the trace minerals. And then we add our cruciferous vegetables. Now, there's any number of cruciferous vegetables that you can do. You can do roasted uh, Brussels sprouts, you can do cauliflower, or you can do broccoli, steamed broccoli, or even cabbage or sauerkraut. And if you want to do a salad, you can just do arugula. The more bitter the vegetable, the better for your liver. Out of all the salad greens, arugula is at the top of the list because it's cruciferous. These cruciferous vegetables activate the genes that cause these enzymes to be produced and work. So if you have a genetic mutation with one of these genes, consuming those foods can speed up this process. Now, just so you know, this is my meal. This is what I eat very often as my first meal of the day. And then as a kind of a dessert, I'll have kefir, which is way better than yogurt. Then I'll put some walnuts in there. And sometimes I might put some um, low carb, no sugar chocolate chips, just a little bit. That's my dessert. But that can actually help with the calcium that you need as well as to your microbiome. What's unique about kefir is that it has a lot more friendly bacteria as well as friendly yeast, whereas yogurt has less bacteria and no friendly yeast. And of course, that's not the only meal, but that's just an example of something that could be good. You definitely want enough protein too with complete amino acids because all these enzymes are made from amino acids. So it's very, very important to have some animal um, meat or eggs with your meal. And to put the icing on the cake, well, I probably shouldn't talk about cake, add additional herbs if you can. If you can add you know, thyme, sage, oregano, cayenne pepper, turmeric, rosemary. Any of these herbs are going to help you in the detoxification process. Now, if you haven't seen this video on how to get rid of a fatty liver, I put it up right here. Check it out.